And yeah, I mean, 2019, 2018 has been just the most hysterical year of my life. Um, I mean, it was very slow first four months of the year. Nothing happened because we were waiting on that was interesting. Like you talk about ups and downs. I mean, mm. that, I had such an epic 2017, everything was spiking. And then I had a big lull because mm. nothing happened. Um, trying to stay focused was difficult. And it was, you know, you know, you start to get, you know, hit, hit, a, bit of a, hit a bit of a rut period. Um, and then suddenly, boom, once again, it was all moving. I had the gym open, you know, mm. everything that could have gone wrong went wrong, you know, plumbing, flooding, you know. Really? Oh, mate, it was honestly like fake it till you make it was never more apparent in the last <laughs> six months because I had to put on a sh like me and Tristan had to put this show on like performance. It was all been a performance, mm. like not a fake kind of way, but like in this industry, like if, if people think you're out of control, um, then they see straight through it. Mm. So you're. I had to perform like, oh, the showers are flooding. Oh no, it's fine. You know, don't worry. Anyway, like, let's go over here. <laughs> it's like spinning plates. Like, like uh, 40 Towers. Yeah, like, mate. Literally shoveling like, people into different like 40 rooms. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> just go over here. Shut up. And like, you just, like having to keep the energy up is, it was, it's been phenomenal. Like, yeah. I remember one morning, like me and Tristan were, me and Tristan, I, I was doing, at the beginning, I was doing 90% of the classes and I literally was like, energy 110% every session. Um, which was isn't sustainable, and mm. you know, I want to talk a little bit about how you know it's it's life is different. Like I, I never ever want it to be like, oh, my life's perfect now, everything's going smoothly. Like my God, do I have days now where I I'm just blown out, mm. you know? And it's it's almost dangerous, and and you know, I, I'm next year. My biggest goal is to try and live, you know, be a little bit more sustainable. Um, but anyway, yeah, we had this one morning where I'd done all morning classes and everyone had left the gym and it was Mr. Smiley, Smiley, Smiley. And then Tristan's coming over to me and he's like, dude, we've got, uh, we've got some work to do. And I walk into the female changing rooms and the whole thing is flooded. Oh, and the, like with the, we opened the back cabinet where the boiler was and it was like up to like knee level yeah. water. Wow. And we were in there, you know, draining this mopping like mopping the floor like and it just made me realize that you know we had two ways to go here you, you can pretend that uh you know everything's great or you can be very upfront and honest mm. and the second we went down that route and upfront and honest with everyone like almost like you know we know that this isn't perfect but you want to come be part of the chaos like, cause it's bloody good fun down here and we will do everything we can to make sure that you're, mm. you have the best time possible and you feel fantastic the second you walk out of the gym. Um, the second we, we approached it in that mindset, it, the ball just started rolling. Really? Like, yeah, man. Like we just weren't being fake with it. Mm. And I think there's a beauty, beautiful thing is not being fake. Yeah. If you can pull that off and make it include people in the experience that you're, well, this is just in behalf of the business we're running. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. Like people love it. They love the fact that they're down there 45 walks of circus with, you know, Hayden Tristan, like where their bloody showers are still, you know, some days we still are, you know, but who gives a shit? You, you know, you're all part of this fun training experience and, and I love, I love every second down there. But mm. having said that, man, it's, it's you know, you, I, I've crashed and burned about four times since I've left. Mm. And it's not depression. It's, it's something that, you know, exhaustion and depression you can have very i don't know if you well because i still see my psychotherapist and i saw him on one of my really dark weeks since we've opened and i was and i said look i mean i'm very aware that my life is pretty good at the moment i've got good business i'm surrounded by great people but i'm fucking miserable i'm so like um, like i'm i can't think straight i'm frustrated i'm you know i, I I'm, I'm very dark i'm in a very dark place and he's like you've got to bear in mind that the, the feelings of exhaustion and depression are very similar. Mm. And then I was like, oh, okay. And then I would go have one sleep and I'd be back to normal. Mm. So exhaustion and this whole burn the candle at both ends thing, which I am currently doing and I'm very aware of it. I am. I mean, I go out and I, and I have fun with my mates and have fun with the members and, and you know, then I turn up at 4.30 the next day to, to, to gym and I'm Mr. Smiley Smiley. It's not sustainable. None, none of this is sustainable and I'm very aware of it. And it's something as an individual I've got to get under control. Mm. But like, And how will you get that under control? Where's, where's the, the it's, balance? It's funny. I mean, um, 
I was just being to Ollie about it now. He's the guy, the, you know, Ollie Fawcett. He's I've worked with him since the start of the inspiration space, and I love him to pieces. And he, he's a young kid, but he's got great perception in life. He's like, dude, like you're, you've got a long, you know, you've got you got some work to do here, man. Like you're you're not, you you could be ten steps ahead for, mm. on the podcast. You know, you, you're not using your time value well enough, and it's true. Even though I'm doing a lot, I could actually be doing less and doing more. Mm. So, you know, and that's something I, as a, as a, I'm not saying I'm a public figure, but if anyone that I come into contact with, I don't want, I don't want them to think that I think I have all the answers or I'm still, uh, I'm still learning and I'm learning so much every day and I know I'm nowhere near perfect. And I think if, if I'm saying that as, as, as a person who's got relative influence in the circles that I'm in, you know, will hopefully make people realize that they have to as well. You know, yeah. we have to keep getting better. We have to. And like the second you think you're perfect, and the second you think you have, you've got no self awareness about what's going on around you, it's dangerous. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I just, I just think it can be a really dangerous thing that people are, you know, very blindsided to to, to the way they're being as an individual. Yeah. Have you read the um, the Four Hour Work Week? Yeah, mate, good book. Yeah. Well, yeah. What th- well, all right, here's a question: Three books that change your life. Oh, tough. Uh, that's a tough question because I would say three books that changed my life. Well, one. No, I can, I, can, <laughs> I can name three, but it's like... So many. It's, it's, the, it's the wording of change your life. That's okay, interesting, right. right? I had the biggest impact. Okay, that's different, see. <laughs> uh, so I would put in the... This changes like day to day, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Like people, I get people messaging me on my Instagram, like, what books would you recommend? And like, you could message me one day, message me another day, and I recommend like three different books, like completely separate lists of threes. Yeah, yeah. But so at the minute... But I think because you asked the previous question of like three books that changed my life, <laughs> I would put The Miracle Morning in there. Miracle Morning. Miracle Morning. It's all about having a really productive Sick. morning routine. Sick. Okay. Amazing book. That that's it's what's big. No. Not at all. That's what got me up in the mornings. I was already going to the gym in the mornings mm. because I'd worked out it was the time of the day that I could really dedic- dedicate the time in and like non-negotiably like that's the time i go to the gym whereas when i was going in the evenings i found that i would there would always be an excuse of oh i've got to go out and meet this person or do this thing or uh i'll go tomorrow or stuff like that was when i started slotting in in the mornings it was it just changed everything so after i started doing that i read the miracle morning which then helped me incorporate more uh, practices into my morning routine which is a game changer mm. um, another one would be so a book I read recently which I've loved loved was The Celestine Prophecy and it's um, it's a bit like have you read The Alchemist or heard of The Alchemist mm, so The yeah, Alchemist is, it's a very like very popular book and so is Celestine Prophecy and they're both very similar in the fact that they're fictional books about you know they're a narrative a story but the story is embedded with a message that is like true to day to day life. And the Celestine prophecy was just like insane. Like on like it just opened my eyes to loads of different things, like mm. signs of, 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 you know, things that happen in your life and energy of like exchange of energy with people. when you're having a mm. conversation, just like loads of different stuff. And then number three, uh oh man this one could be so many i'm gonna go with the one i've read most recently because it's it's been a really interesting read which is um a tim ferris book again um tools of, tools of times mm. just game changer it's just that's just like a bible of just knowledge just, yeah, literally it's like i said that i tell you what there's my one of my favorite um one of my favorite ever snippets of any book is in that book really you know how we asked that question, define people's, uh, define, oh no, not even define it. Um, what is your uh, perception of success? Success, yeah. Okay, you asked Derek Sev- Sivers. Oh mate, do you know what? You know what I'm going to say? Yeah, go on. And go again, on. He, goes, he goes, success um, is a difficult, like no, he doesn't even say, he's like, it's a hard question to ask because in my opinion, success is different and should be unique to every individual mm. so you should make your like you, there's no one answer yeah. there is if you look at it there's no one answer because everybody's different you know everybody is different so your values and of life and morals in life are all different and who says that everybody's version of success should be financial 
or whatever. Mm. It should be completely and utterly unique to you. You should mm. set the terms of, of what success is to you as an individual. And I yeah. think when I actually read that, I Amazing. think that was that was a big moment actually yeah. when reading that. And do you know what? It's so funny that you've mentioned that because mm. that's the only because the book's made up of like all of the best nuggets mm. from his best interviews mm. on his podcast. That's the only one where I've gone back and listened to the full podcast interview. It's interesting. It's like just amazing conversation it's with him. And then I bought the, the Derek book. Sivers book as well, which I haven't read yet. Interesting. Uh, it's very high up on my on my next to read list. Um, what about you? What about books that have <sighs> most, most uh, given you the most value? It's funny. It's funny. It's, it's, it's one thing. So I'm at a stage in my life where I'm very happy with the way it's going. And there are things that I'm I'm learning every day, and I'm happy with those parts. But I also am very aware that I'm regressing in certain areas as mm. well currently, just to the state of where my life is, and it's frustrating. But you know, it is what it is. Yeah. And one area is I don't feel like I am learning. Oh really? Yeah, and it frustrates me because I nothing better, in my opinion, is when you have got a cup of coffee and you're reading a book and you're learning and you're taking notes, and then I get to journal about it. So I still journal every day. But, yeah. yeah, but normally I would take something about from what I'm reading and how I can put that into my, my life and how I can learn and get better in, in that. And, I, and I'm, I love getting better. I love being able to provide value every day. And I feel like I'm providing value at the moment. Mm. But, I, you know, I, I, I love reading. So like learning from these books is just so up on my agenda of something I need to get back into doing. But that's a growth mindset. You know, mm. I'm, not, I'm not like, oh, this is shit. My life's over. You know, I'm I'm being a terrible human being because I'm not doing this, that, and the other. Yeah. You know, I know that I can get back into it. It's not the end of the world. So, mindset is big. I mean, just for the, I didn't, like I said, I didn't even read the whole thing. But in terms <laughs> of the impact of change in my life, like the first three chapters of that book, oh my god, you can you can dissect the world in between those two types of people. You know, I mean, and she talks about how you can view how you can, you know, see who's got, it's obvious who's got a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. So that's one. Two um, is willpower, uh, rediscovering our greatest strength. It's actually mm. by Roy Baumeister or something like that. Insane book, insane book. Basically talks about how um, willpower is, um, it's not really it's not it's not really, it's a characteristic but basically how you can it's not just simply saying oh you you've got you need to have more willpower you need to work on your willpower you know it's how you can do that and yeah. you know how nutrition can make play a value how sleep can play a value how um you know it talks about you know society you know society and and how you can say the people who who uh why why people who uh have done so many crimes don't have high level of willpowers but that's not enough to say that why is that mm. you know like is it because that they haven't get got the correct nutrition you know is it because that they've x y and z it, it's just a very smart book how you can put protocols into place to help you financially in terms of put willpower in that element in that side of your life mm. how you can put willpower into you know getting you know fitter and stronger as an individual so that's a that's a very smart book and it also you know addiction it, it talks a lot about that you know i mean it looks at you know individuals who've had very you know arguably addiction i mean that's a whole nother topic but you know how people have recovered from addiction and put practices into place to make sure that you know they don't any longer do heroin or, or drink or whatever like that so it's, it's it's a smart book it's clever and it's something that i, I like to go and read it parts of um every now and then um a third one again um something that i'm not really <laughs> adhering to at the moment but essentialism you heard mm, of that no essentialism is great greg mccohen it basically talks to you about how you can actually align everything in your all the decisions you make and through picking a focus and once you pick that main focus throwing everything you can at it and then you can, if you have an essential intent, so everybody yeah. should have an essential intent, you know, what's the main, what's the main focus and what's the most yeah. important thing in your life? So whether it be, you know, being a better father, okay, if that's your essential intent, then everything that comes your way, you can say yes, no, yeah. yes or no to. Because if it doesn't correlate or, you know, adhere to, to, to where you, to your essential yeah, intent, yeah. then 
what's the point? You, yeah. know, the, you know the answer. So yeah, in terms of those things, those have had a big impact. Um, but like I said, man, there are so many books out there that oh, I want to read. Yeah, oh. mate, I've got, I mean, in my room, I've got a stack of about 20 to 30 books that I've read and then another stack of like 20 to 30 that I need to read. To, yeah. And it's like, I just do, keep... Do, do, keep, do you keep, make a habit of reading every day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most do you have days. any big time routines? You know, talk to me about your oh, routines. I'm intrigued. I love this one. I find yeah, it I was going to ask you the same. Um, <laughs> so we'll go into it. So so my my morning routine is like a military operation. Like, oh, there's like no compromise like on it. any of it. It's like the only, the only time there's a slight compromise is if I need to be somewhere earlier. Mm. But let's say it's a normal day. So my alarm goes off at uh, six o'clock and then another one goes off at 6.10 and then another one goes off at 6.20 and then another one goes off at 6.30. <laughs> 6.30, I get up a bit. <laughs> uh, get up. First thing I do, into the toilet, straight into the kitchen, glass of water and a banana, back into my room, get changed for the gym. Um, and actually, I've been doing this earlier because the gym that I'm going to currently opens at 6. I've been getting it for 6.30, but we'll go to what the normal the norm is. Uh, get changed for the gym, jog to the gym. I'm there for 7. Do 45 minutes uh, working out, 60 minutes. 20 minutes stretching, warming down, walk back home, uh, come in the kitchen, healthy breakfast shake uh, made up of banana, blueberries, ice, oats, protein powder, peanut butter, chia seeds, almond milk, smash it all together in Nucci bullet, have a coffee with it. Then I jump in the shower, come out the shower, get myself changed, meditate for 10 minutes, uh, read through my affirmations, uh, to myself in the mirror, say them out loud. Um, and then I'm out the door by about half nine. Um, and then I read on the tube on the way into wherever I'm, you know, work or if I'm going elsewhere, which is normally 15 minutes of reading. And then I read again on the way back. Uh, so I get like half an hour at least of reading in a day. And sometimes I, I go to bed and I, I just read 20 minutes before I go to bed or half an hour. Um, I've added a new thing into my night routine. So I've got a, a different routine in the evenings. So evenings, uh, I left out having a shower in the morning. Obviously, I shower after the gym. <laughs> I don't go to work this way. So after my breakfast, I shower. Um, so night before, before I go to bed, go uh, brush my teeth and go in my room. If I can, if, I, if, if it's not too late, I'll do another 10 minute meditation. Uh, I'll fill in my gratitude journal, which is writing down three things I'm grateful for from that day. I'll do some reading. Um, and I've just added in, uh, I've just bought a Rubik's Cube. I'm determined to to clock a Rubik's Cube from memory uh, by the end of 2019. So that's the kind of... Sick. Yeah, half an hour Rubik's Cube practice. Fucking hell, yeah. make your brain tick. Yeah, yeah, and no, it does. It's, it was, but I've, it's, I've always wanted to just be able to do it yeah, yeah, without yeah. having to read the instructions or watch yeah. a video. Uh, so that's it, man. Yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting. pretty like... I love, I just love, I love those. Mm. I find it fascinating. Yeah, what about you? What's yours? I actually want to change my answer previously. You just touched on a thing there. Another book. I'll take out Essentialism, even though it's a brilliant book. Sleep by yeah. Nick Littlehales. Okay. Genius book. Yeah. Well, not genius. I mean, it's, it's, and he'll say this, it's a lot of it's common sense. But it actually, it talks about the importance of it and, you know, um, the effects of, you know, once again, I'm not really adhering to this at the moment, but it's, it's, it's the, like the effects that lack of sleep can have. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's terrifying actually. Um, and I, nothing, I, I would say the amount of sleep I'm having at the moment, you know, I'm up, I'm up, oper I'm operating probably at about 50% of my natural cognitive really? ability. Yeah. Shit. I hate it. I really so do. How much sleep are you getting? Then? I'm about at five to six, but it's not quality. It's not actually necessarily about quali quantity. It's quality. It's, it's quality. So do you sleep well though in general? Well, at the moment, because I'm just so knackered, but I will fall asleep. But that doesn't necessarily mean anything either. Yeah. It's, you know, what's going on. Because your body doesn't just, you know, there's shit going on inside your yeah. body. I think, I think I've read something or heard something recently and yeah. I could be completely wrong. Yeah. I often make stuff up <laughs> <laughs> just to suit my own kind of uh, what I want to know. But I'm pretty sure I heard or read something recently that your body works harder while you're sleeping than it does during the day. Because it's, it, it's more kind of recovery and repair and yeah. undoing all of the stuff that's yeah. happened throughout the day, which is why we need toxins. to sleep. You yeah. get rid of the toxins in your body. It's, it's so important. And um, 
you know, I'm very aware, like I said, again, that, that that's something that has to change, mm. you know? So like it talks a lot about, you know, well being. it talks basically about how it's all common sense. It really is. But like reading it, it makes it so obvious. So definitely it's as small as well. Anyone listen to this, give it read. It's, it's, it's brilliant. So it basically talks about, you know, society and, and, and things that come into our society and he calls them well being red flags. Um, that we just have to get under control because it's they're, they're not healthy. It's not helping our sleep. Mm. So stuff like you know too much coffee, you know sleeping pills, like you know alcohol, like mm. all these things that are just you know if you have too much of them, they're gonna just mm. they're, they're not good for your body, which means you're not recovering. How quickly. important diet within that diet? Well. Massive, 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 massive. Like you know, I mean, I, I've studied nutrition for a long time. I know I know exactly what works for me. Am I doing it? No. Like, <laughs> like back in the day when you need I, to reread willpower. Yeah, I need to read. I need to reread. I need to you know readjust my life. You know, but um, you know, it's a brilliant. It talks a lot about, and this is why it's, it's entered the top three. Something you talked about is you know morning routines and mm. actually pre sleeping routines. Mm. Like God, how many people do you know you speak to and they say I can't switch off at night? Can you put stuff into yeah. place? Fuck yeah, of course you can. Yeah. Like stuff like make, so he talks about, and this is something I used to do religiously, even when I had a girlfriend, you know, I used to be selfish, 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 selfish with the hour before I went to bed and the hour after I woke up. Yeah. I, do you know what? I'm really looking forward to the time where um, I've got a girlfriend and I have to explain, like yeah. I need to have half an hour to like, for myself before I get to sleep. Yeah. Like I have hundred. to do my meditation, yeah. have to do this. Like, like they just have to deal with it, you know? Yeah. Um, and it, you know, I mean, one of the things he talks about in the book is how the bed is just for sleeping. Mm. You know, if you're, if you're um, in your bed and you're working on your phone, you know, you know, you build up this negative kind of, you build up this negative uh, uh, sociology with your, with your bed. Mm. Or, um, you know, if you, if you're lying there and tossing and turning, get up and get out. Like mm. go and sit somewhere until you're tired. Yeah. Like all these things that make so much sense. Like, but you don't, like I didn't really, they didn't, it all came together in that book. So that's definitely one. But yeah, I mean, when I'm operating at full whack, um, I will, when I wake up, I will go and have two pints of water because that resets everything for me. Two so pints? Two pints. Just wow. get it down me. Just get it down me. Um, oh, you've got to force that down, surely. Well, I, I do. Like I do. Glass, to be fair, I have one pint, and then basically what that does is it resets my digestive system. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. Like it just gets everything rolling. So, um, I'll have a shower. So I'll have it. Sorry, shower, water, coffee. Mm. Um, and back in the day, I would, I would, I would journal. I would journal. I say back in the day, it wasn't that long, it was six months ago. But you know, when I when I get back into because the reason I'm saying all this stuff, like, like I want to make it, like I said, I want to make it realize I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to be fake. But um, this is all going to return. Like, but at the moment, the last six months, I'll just be keeping my head above water. Mm. You know, because I'm I leave the gym, I leave the house at quarter past five. I'm in the gym at you know uh, twenty to six. So you know, I don't really have much, of, and I leave at half nine at night. Wow. But this is an investment right now. You know, yeah. um, and it, it can't last forever. But you know, I would yeah. So then I would I would journal, and then I would go to the gym, and that is was non-negotiable you have to be selfish and ruthless with that time because yeah. it's your time you, nobody else's agendas are coming on your plate and like that is a powerful thing i always used to get the most the best tasks done in that day when it was my time mm. and i actually think that we could do it all day really yeah. if, you, if you put boundaries into places i mean tim ferris talks about in four hour work week you are actually in complete control how many people do action that day you yeah know? 